in this lab we are going to learn about the Android permissions the purpose of Android permission is to secure the user privacy in mobile application especially in Android so uh, what is privacy uh, like uh, you want to hide your uh, personal data your photos and your documents in your in your uh, mobile from other application as well as from the user so from the user you can hide them by setting up some pattern or some password on your mobile but uh, to hide your uh, secure or sensitive data from other application which are already installed within the operating system uh, so android operating system provides you the you know, permission architecture for that so as a developer we are going to learn how to uh, implement these permissions uh, for our new applications and how to uh, apply them and what are the best practices for uh, implementing these permissions in this lab so the lab uh, already has a prerequisite uh, like uh, we have already covered the lecture on Android permissions where we have discussed the code examples which will be running in this lab and uh, you should also be able to import uh, the code example from the github in your Android studio uh, the examples we are covering is the uh, that uh, we have uh, two applications like uh, one is uh, use dangerous uh, activity app and another is the actual dangerous activity which has an uh, one activity and that activity uh, has a dangerous permission to be granted then you can run this activity so uh, what we are doing is like uh, in this uh, uh, application uh, use dangerous activity we are taking uh, permissions from the user and once the permission are, are granted then we can call this dangerous activity and launch this activity uh, the activity of this uh, dangerous application uh, the those uh, permissions are even not declared uh, by default in the dangerous activity so you cannot execute it by default so let's go through the code I have already opened it in case you have not opened it uh, so you can go to the lecture let me open and show you the lecture so this is our lecture number 7 on android permissions uh, you can click on the link and it will open this link uh, you can copy the url from the code section uh, you just copy it and then in your android studio uh, you can go and just import that uh, clone that project to your desktop you say that okay uh, I want to open new project from the version control on the gate and then you just uh, clone it on this path okay so you can have your own path and just paste the URL here once you start clone it will bring and clone the project on your desktop on this path and then you will be able to run uh, this I have already done it uh, to save the gradle time like the gradle build time and uh, I have opened another application as well the dangerous activity application uh, this is the uses using dangerous activity application and the first one was the dangerous activity so let's uh, first go through how we declare the dangerous uh, custom dangerous permission in our dangerous activity app over here you declare it with the permission tag and you provide it a name uh, and this is the name of your package okay and this is the custom name usually we provide it in the caps letter uh, separated by underscore uh, this is the uh, default practice from the uh, android permission architecture then you provide a description of it and you can give it a label uh, these two information will be shown to the user when permission granting request is appearing by the android operating system to the to the user and the protection level is dangerous so it can be normal and the third uh, the third one was like signature based uh, in this application we have only one launcher activity and we have declared that okay even that activity requires this uh, dangerous permission so by default it is not available to the user to the user when you install it you cannot launch it okay uh, even I have launched it on the emulator and you see this is the dangerous activity app I want to run it and it will show me that application is not installed it is actually installed but there is no activity to be shown to you okay so uh, and now let's go to the other app uh, 
up here we are uh, asking the user that I want to open an activity in the dangerous air okay so we check the permission and if it is not there so we request the permission if the permission is already granted so it creates the intent and then start that activity so let's debug our application okay so this is the debugging part uh, this will clarify the stuff to us the cradle build process is running uh, when it is in progress you should not do some other actions on the IDE it can uh, damage your IDE so now the application is successfully installed okay uh, waiting for debugger to be attached okay so now uh, the user dangerous activity is launched uh, when I click this button so uh, we will start our debug debugger so you see uh, we have set up our debugger here so by default I am checking that check, check self permission uh, do I have these permissions in my application already so you can go by F8 line by line so uh, I already have those permissions so I go directly to the else part and I create an intent and my action in the intent is to uh, have this active this action okay this is my dangerous action and I am starting the intent so let's go by F9 and it will automatically launch that activity you see the now this is the dangerous activity and phone will restart to erase everything so in case I didn't have these permissions uh, it will uh, ask me that okay request the per it will ask me to grant those permissions uh, you have already seen that part uh, in the video uh, which is on uh, for 42 minutes uh, let me show you the videos that describes you these details so I just wanted to let you know that how you can debug and run your applications ok so it's on my another screen over here in the video by Ibtisam Gulu uh, he has explained it uh, the life cycle of how Android permissions are asked and how the, fl the flow is going so you can debug that flow by yourself uh, in this uh, application ok so let's go back to the examples I just show you that how it works So over here even uh, you should also be checking for like uh, if this permission is already uh, granted then you perform this uh, this part otherwise you don't 